So I guess um, I want you to go into break thinking about what is meant by expectation value. How many here have heard the phrase expectation value? Wait, what class have you heard of it? Uh, in high school, statistics. Statistics would have been one place. Um, anyone else have taken statistics? No? <laughs> OK, so in high school statistics, what did the expectation value mean? Yeah, I will briefly talk about it. Um, has anyone here heard the phrase that lottery is tax on the people who can't do math? I mean, we do get lottery funding, so maybe I shouldn't say it. But it is tax on people who can't do math. So in what sense do they mean that you can't do math? I mean, you know, you win the lottery, you win $30 million. Why don't you pay however much the ticket is? $5, $10? Dollar? Dollar? Dollar. Dollar? Whatever. Why would you pay $2 to, for a chance to win $30 million? Because the odds are so low. And how you show that mathematically is through expectation value. So this is how you calculate expectation value. And I, OK, I guess um, a lot of you don't have experience buying lottery. So let me give you an example that's a little bit closer to home, maybe a little too close. This is how I came up with a formula that um, was applied, or that I said would apply to your multiple choice, where if I were to fill out your answers, then you know, I'm going to take a quarter. Of. So um, let me tell you what the expectation value of your multiple choice exam score is if you are guessing randomly. And so, so let's see. Um, let me start out with a simpler example. Let, if you have 100% chance of being correct for 35 questions. What, um, what score do you expect to get? Yeah, 35 out of 35, right? Now, what if um, so if you if you are guessing randomly and every question has four choices, for example, then um, then um, then what's the like what's the chance of you getting a question correct by simply guessing randomly? One out of four, or twenty five percent chance of being correct. Um, so I think if I asked you the question, most of you would answer then, you know, not rounding anything, you would be, I don't know, is it 8.75? Um, I think, really? That's lower than I thought. Uh, out of 35. That would be, um, that would be like on average. <laughs> on average, this is what you would get by simply guessing randomly, right? And here's how you would uh, kind of expand out this calculation. So I hope this makes intuitive sense, just from your basic number sense. How, how you would expand it out is this. So you, you have n events. So 35 questions, those are n events. So sum of i going from 1 to 35. And let's say, um, let's say p i, that represents your chance of getting a question correct. So in this case, each one of those is 1 fourth. Um, you multiply that with the number of points you get. In our case, that would be one, right? 
and um, so divide. So so that would give you. Um, Oh, well, actually, you know what? That would give you 8.5. Um, well, I'm, I'm not quite doing this right. Um, so, <laughs> um, and yeah, I'm being a little bit uh, more murkier than it should be. Um, mm, um, so, that's 8.5. I guess the way I'm applying the formula is a little bit different. Um, I probably should have used the example of SAT, but I don't think SAT does this anymore. A SAT exam used to take points off for the questions you attempt to answer, and then you get wrong. Do people remember that? Yeah, yeah they used to do that. For a multiple choice question of four choices, for every wrong answer, they would take a third of the points off. And um, their reasoning was this kind of expectation value calculation. So this, so, so imagine someone who's guessing randomly. For every question they answer, they have a chance of getting the question right and getting one point there. And um, so this is the case where it's correct, which means the expectation value of someone guessing things randomly would be whatever number of questions divided by the chance. So what they've done is they adjust that, adjust that expectation value by, uh, um, so you can think of it as this math question. So this is the end result uh, when you get something correct. When you get something incorrect, then you have the, uh, let's say Q of I stands for the probability that you are incorrect on that question. And this is the, um, this is the exercise. What should the point that you assign in that case be so that this adds up to zero? So that someone who's guessing randomly ends up with a score of zero. What's the probability that someone's incorrect? So, yeah, we said this is one over four. So the probability that someone's incorrect is three over four. So what should the value of x be so that this adds up to zero? Minus one over three, right? So if this x is minus one over three, then um, then you know you get plus one half, minus one fourth, as the expectation value of the chance of the event when you are incorrect. So the what we call expectation value is the average of all these possible outcomes. So let me um, describe what happens with the lottery, and then we'll go into break. And when we come back from break, we'll talk about how this applies to quantum mechanics when we are actually trying to do not trying to make money on lottery. So um, do some people here know the lottery prices? No? I'll just make up some number. Let's say, um, let's say a lottery ticket um, costs Five dollars, as an example, um, and usually many lotteries are set in a way your probability of winning is at some fixed percentage because you are guessing some uh, number in a sequence of numbers. So let's say you have uh, one in ten million chance of being right. Now here's a maybe surprising fact. Um, so some lotteries are running in a way that if there's no winner, the pot get, keeps accumulating, right? So then next week, there's a bigger pot. At some point, the pot can be so big that your expectation value from buying a lottery ticket can be positive. So the question here would be, well, how big would that pot have to be so that I expect to get something less, you know, greater than zero from buying this lottery ticket? Well, let's just do the calculation. So uh, we won't bother with the sum. We are just dealing with two chances. So chance of winning the lottery, 
let me write down that as one term, plus chance of losing the lottery, which is what a lot of people are doing. So when you lose the lottery, what's your outcome, money-wise? You lost $5. So the outcome here is minus $5. What's the chance of that happening? One minus some one, you know, so I guess that's practically one, right? Yeah. Practically one, so I'll just say approximately equal to one. <laughs> um, so what's your chance of winning the lottery? Well, it's one in a 10 million. So your chance of winning the lottery is one over 10 to the seven, one in 10 million. So now this is the question. What should the, the jackpot be? So that when you add this up, you get something that's bigger than zero. 50 million, right? Yeah. So if the jackpot is as big as 50 million, then, um, then your expected winning or expected result from lottery can be, so it, it's no longer tax on the uh, math uh, uh, illiterate. It's now whoever is there to win. <laughs> now, um, so that's uh, what we mean by expectation value. And I want to separate this. The whole concept of expectation value, when I first learned it in quantum mechanics, it was revolutionary because that helps you strategize. It helps you think in a way that a lot of people don't learn to do unless they've taken statistics. But you want to <laughs> sort of separate out. This whole expectation value that represents what you would get if you play the lottery 10 million times or something. If you don't play 10 million times, then your result is kind of one or the other. So the expectation value being positive doesn't mean that um, it's actually concretely positive to you. But, um, but so this is an extreme example. With the quantum mechanics, we can talk about more, you know, less extreme on either end. So we will, um, Talk about it in a little bit, but let's take the break now. Uh, come back at 2.10, please. And we will show some examples of uh, calculation using these wave functions and the interpretation of the, the, how you get probability density from the wave function.